Oh, it's like I planted that question. I wish I would have. No, that is the perfect question because absolutely. Welcome to the Brionis Pickleball Podcast. Welcome to another episode. Today, I have a very, very special guest, Dr. Christopher K. Bray. Oh, like you paused when you said it like I'm important. Yeah, well... <laughs> I don't know. When it's doctor, man, you gotta, you kind of got to listen up a little bit. Uh, I've got That's, some good advice. We'll share some yeah. good stuff that people want to listen. Yeah. So uh, in this podcast, um, Chris, thank you for being here. You bet. But we're going to talk about um, a lot of mental stuff, brain stuff. Uh, we're going to get into kind of a little bit of his background. This is going to be a really great podcast, everyone. So stay tuned for this. But uh, so Dr. Bray is a cognitive behavioral researcher, mm -hmm. speaker and author. Uh, and CEO, founder of Adaption Institute, um, and we're, we'll talk about that later. All right. Um, he's written several books now, and he's done a lot of stuff in what would you would you say brain and health space, or how would you how would you describe like what you do? Um, I would say that it's a lot of the brain spaces in performance oh, change, really? okay. the right habits, the right behaviors, so okay. that you can be at your best no matter what you're performing in. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, and so you still do that today, but yet you wear many hats. It's not like you have a, a nine to five job, right? You kind of do. No. Everything. Yeah. So I, we're a global company, global organization. Oh. We have people all over the world. And what we do is we work mostly with fortune 500 organizations who need to up their performance or they're Got going it. through changes and they think, how, how can we thrive and be resilient okay. and really perform through okay. all of these changes? And then we come in and help them do that. Okay. Well, it sounds awesome. And we'll get more into that, but along with. The reason why he's um, speaking to us and he's here today, we've we've come to know each other. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the first pe uh, people that I've met here when we moved to Arizona. And um, let's see, Chris, uh, we've taken a trip or two. Yep, up to Pine Top. Up to Pine some great Top, pickleball. Um, great pickleball. So he is a pickleball connoisseur, <laughs> and and it says here in your bio, ice cream connoisseur. Yep, a little bit of both. So um, I don't know what you like more, but what flavor are we talking about here? Just okay, all or I'm telling you, because ice cream. I mean, you've got to know ice cream. But if okay. you are near a Julie's ice huh. cream store, they have the best Wait, ice cream is that, in in the U.S. Is that a nationwide? I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's in some major cities. I think oh. it's like in Chicago. Okay, it, it, there's one in Scottsdale, and really? I highly recommend it. So okay, all right, best ice cream. Um, awesome. Well, yeah. So Chris. Um, huge in the brain slash health space and what he kind of just told you about there. We're going to be talking a lot about that. And I do have a lot of questions about um, how it relates to pickleball. Um, a lot of our viewers or all of our viewers, right? Either play pickleball, they're trying to improve and, um, you know, they're trying to improve their game. So I think this is just a really interesting topic. It's good to have someone in the professional space there. Um, yeah, we're gonna improve their game. Okay. They're gonna be oh. able to go out the next day and see a difference oh, in okay. their pickleball game. Okay, I like that. And and all up here. And all up here. So you're so good at skills yeah. and you know, teaching and yeah. we're gonna teach them what should they be thinking about and how should they practice and how long should they practice and what's going on in their brain and yeah. why they make, you know, some pickleball, you make a mistake, yeah. oftentimes it'll be followed up with another mistake or yes. your partner makes a mistake yes. and then yes. you do. How do you fix yeah. those things and change it? No, that's really awesome, man. And um, how, do you remember how we met? We met at a workspace that I think we both used to go to. We don't anymore. It's not easy spaces, right? It's easy spaces, oh, it with, is easy with, spaces. with Darby. Who okay, is Darby. Phenomenal. Shout out to Darby. Highly recommend going yeah. to that, that space. And you may not remember this, but yeah. when we met, it was you and your wife. I think so. And I kept on saying, I know you from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You look so familiar. Mm -hmm. And you didn't give it up. Like you weren't giving up why I knew you. Did I, did I not? You did not give it up. You just okay. sat there and smiled. I was just, uh, just smiling. Okay. You were being humble. So then <laughs> yeah, yeah. Darby said, I think it was Darby who said, oh, well, he's got a, a pickleball YouTube channel. And then it clicked. Yeah. And so hence. So you've been uh, watching it in a while. Huh? I had been. I'm trying to improve. I'm nice. always trying to improve. Nice, I don't know if it works, but we're, we're trying. Well, 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 you'll help him out with the mental yeah. space and we'll, uh, we'll get you on the court after this. So uh, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you live here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And you're in Gilbert. Yeah, you have double the kids I have. That's pretty impressive. I mean, I have three, and people look at me like, wow, how do you do it? You know, so you have six. Oh, yeah, we have a whole clan. Yeah. So four uh, are out. Yeah. I have five daughters and one son. Son came last, so it was kind of a little benefit along the way. But okay, cool. great bunch of kids. All of them pickleball players. I had daughters who were all tennis players. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so the oldest 
four daughters really? all play pickleball. One of them just did a five zero tournament in in St. George. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. You yeah. did tell me. That. I didn't know all of them played, though. Yeah, they all play, and, wow. and they're all great players and wow. um, aggressive. So That's really cool. So we get some good That's Bray really pickleball awesome, tournaments man. as well as fights. I mean, they're great. If you're a neighbor yeah. of the Braves when we're playing pickleball at Christmas, you're going you're gonna to hear it. Yeah, and and like yourself, you have a – or like like myself, yeah. you have a court in your backyard. Oh, yeah. Right? Do you have well, two or one? Just one. Okay. I wish I had room for two, but COVID brought the pickleball court. And luckily, I yeah. did it when nobody – was building pickleball courts, so I got it uh-huh. on the on the less expensive end, yeah, and then it yeah, took yeah. off over COVID. So wow. it was a it was a good buy. Wow. Okay. So, um, so Chris, like I'm still learning a lot. Like actually, if someone to were to tell me, hey, your friend Chris, what does he do? I don't really, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So if you were to put it in uh, maybe layman's uh, pickleball okay. terms, uh, terms, um, like. What, what, what is What do you, um, what is the word? Not your master. What do, like, what do you specialize in? Like, what, what is actually your thing? Uh, I know you have like two PhDs and, and stuff like that, but like, what is your thing? What's my thing? Well, it, my kids are the same way. They ask, what do you really do? And the older <laughs> ones think I work for the FBI yeah. because I travel and they really don't know what I do. So something, yeah. something secret, but uh-huh. what we do is the Adaption Institute. Um, we're an organization that specializes in change and resilience and thriving and also performance. So how do we perform at our best, go through change, thrive through change, continue to grow and develop with most of the um, brain science coming into play there. So the neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and what is the latest research telling us about performance in all areas of our life? Because even sports performance has made major leaps and changes in the last couple of years. Interesting. Yeah, so I have a lot of questions about that later, but so do you... Do you, are you working with, you said, it says here like fortune five, do you work with companies or it's not athletes in particular, right? It's, it's more companies or yeah, most organizations. So mostly fortune okay. 500. So like Microsoft and Google and yeah. Wells Fargo and general mills and organizations like that. And every once in a while yeah. we'll sneak in an an individual to do that. But it's, I mean, when you do an individual, it's a lot of time, not as quite as lucrative as is the, yeah. you know, the large organizations, Yeah, but individuals because then you're working on what we consider the eight pillars of brain health Mm -hmm. brain performance and that includes we'll talk all about this but things like sleep and social and what you eat and what you're thinking and are you learning and all these things that keep you your brain running at top performance well that's really good i mean i I think all that can be really really well related to pickle oh all of it so Without getting too deep, what, what are those? You said there's eight pillars. And is this something that you've came up with or is this kind of just known in the in the space? Oh, I wish I would have come up with okay. it. Okay. <laughs> right. But what, what, uh, where the eight pillars came from is I yeah. teach at the Harvard um, Brain Health Initiative. Okay. And so what Harvard did along with several other institutions, research institutions, yeah. top thinkers, Nobel Prize winners, okay. came up with these eight pillars of brain health. Now, not all of them apply to pickleball, but a majority okay. of them do like movement and eating and sleeping and the social aspect of, yeah. of your life yeah. that really apply to pickleball and help you be happy and fulfilled, yeah. but also perform at your very best. And, and included in that, okay. we even drill down to things like how often should you be learning or training and how long should you train and what should that look like and what yeah. should your sleep look like and mm. what should you be eating? And we'll, we'll cover all, I mean, we could okay. talk for hours, but all we'll right. cover a lot of that and give you all the information that you and your listeners need. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, leave some comments below. Um, if you, you know, if you're interested in this or maybe you have some questions and we'll answer them later, but, uh, sure. Uh, Chris, how did you, um, so you played tennis before pickable. Mm-hmm. Yep, right. I played high school tennis. Oh, you played high school. And that was got about it. as great as I got. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe I could have gone to some little small yeah, school yeah. with like 300 students and played tennis there. But okay. that right. was, um, right. and then got all my daughters into it. So really got tennis it. for decades really? was, was in our life. Actually, I think I can say that I won a 4-0 tournament, tournament mixed doubles mm. in my 30s in Texas. So, I mean, I could say I got one. Was that with your wife? No. Or no. Okay. All right. <laughs> I had to I had to get a better player. Oh. Hopefully she's not gonna listen to this. I'm just kidding. No. I'm kidding. Okay. No, I'm totally kidding. It was okay. she you know, at that time we had a lot of little babies and so uh, yeah. I just happened to yeah. someone introduced us and we tried a tournament together and, okay. and did a good All job. Right. And that's a USTA, USTA. kind of thing. Yeah, I used to I used to play some tournaments too. Yeah. So yeah. Um so how did you 
Uh, and we're, we're going to get more into the brain science and, and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But so how did you get into to pickleball? Like what, what, what was your first time? What, what was that experience like? Well, it's for me, it's a little bit of a disappointing story because oh, really? my, here's okay. why my brother started playing pickleball in Utah. I'm not kidding you probably eight or nine years ago, yeah. might even been a decade ago. Yeah. And so yeah. we would go every time we were up there visiting, we would go out and play tennis and he says, no, you got to try yeah. this new sport. But I didn't know, I'd never heard of it, never saw the paddles. Mm -hmm. And so he tried to teach us with his wife. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was a diehard tennis player, you know. Now how just, many, like how many years was that ago? I'd say this was at least a decade, probably okay. nine or 10 years ago. So before it yeah, ever yeah, yeah. even, even yeah. in Utah before it really hit. Okay, so it would, yeah, you were introduced to it pretty early. Yeah, pretty early, but I, okay, listen to this, yeah. I didn't pick it up, I didn't, yeah. you know, cause no one in Arizona really I knew yeah. was playing, no yeah. one really had courts. I think I knew one person who had a court. Whereas if I would have picked it up then, yeah. oh, think of how good I would be now. So really yeah. picked it up at the very beginning of COVID is when I started playing. And oh, I didn't know it was that recent. Yeah, it's it's just oh, been the last really? two, what, two, three years that I've started okay. about a little over two years. Wow. Okay. So are you saying wow because you think I'm good for that time or wow? No, you no, should I be just, better in two you, years. No, <laughs> you know what? I just thought of um I don't know. I guess when we went on that trip, that was a while ago, and I just I don't know. It, it's, it's been a blur, even yeah. for me, oh, yeah. even for my story. So, um, no, no, a lot of people, uh, we could call it, I don't know, maybe there's a term we come the, you know, the COVID pickleball players, right. but, but I mean, probably millions, millions, millions during that time. Uh, you, you know, we already know like lots of things were locked down and, and stuff like that. They were forcing people outside, but that was as, as it, you know, got under control. That was pickleball was one of the things that just exploded. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're all so, sneaking on courts and <laughs> yeah. climbing fences and yeah. doing what we could to play some pickleball and, yeah, and be outside. Yeah. So, so you started during COVID or right before? Probably like, just a little bit right before, maybe five, six times I'd played with some guys I, I knew, okay. but really started saying, oh, this is really fun. I can play it three, four, five, six, seven times a week. Yeah, no, no, that was awesome. And you're still playing tennis then or, or no? Um, no, because I'd stopped uh, okay. a little bit. Didn't really have, cause you know, with tennis, you got to have people who are yeah. close to your same level. So it's always difficult to find individuals to play with. Yeah. And with a lot of kids and yeah, work yeah. and the business, it okay. wasn't as much as I wanted. So it, when I picked up pickleball, it was so easy and so fun and so social. Yeah. You can actually talk to people while you're playing and yeah. they make fun of you and you make fun of them. Um, yeah. it, it just, it, it was all over. No, that's cool. Um, so where, where are you in your game right now? Are you playing tournaments and are you like, what level are you? Okay. So I'd say four to four, five. Okay. Depends on the day. Almost. I would say four five with your help. Maybe we'll get there in the next couple months. Is that a self rating or a duper rating? <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to play, I need to play more tournaments. Oh, okay. I'm 53. Right. So finding a 53 year old uh -huh. to play tournaments with, cause I want to take it a little more seriously yeah, where we're yeah. practicing together. Uh -huh. Come to you. You can okay. help us with the strategy. So yeah, yeah. I've done um, a couple tournaments, did one with my wife. We took gold at the one in St. George last year. What level was that? It, I think we did three, five and, okay. and she, oh, she was phenomenal. Okay. Like she played out of her mind. Wow, so it was, nice. it was great, but more tournaments on the horizon. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, especially as the last two come out of a uh, high school, right? That's right. We can travel on the weekends oh, and, cool, and do man. things like that. So yeah. more, so I'd say four or five. So I'm on the lookout for a good four or five who wants to take it a little more seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So what do you, what do people usually ask you? when um when you tell them about kind of like what you do do um you know because i know you or let me just ask you this out of all the things that you do what are, what are what is like one of the most important things that you think that you do like you make an impact on because I, I, I know you're you, you do a lot of different things i would say probably three areas one people say how can i with my brain how can i be more happy or fulfilled yeah. and on the opposite end of that is less stressed, less anxious, maybe less depressed. What things can we do? Because we are a research-based organization. So we're reading and talking to all these top neuroscientists, cognitive behavioral researchers okay. of what's coming out. And so they're always saying, what's, what's new? And I'm often a guinea pig for a lot of things like huh. wearables and things like that. We'll get those early and try those, you know, blood sugar, yeah, you know, like all sorts of different things. Yeah. So I would say health and longevity that relate to your performance as an individual more than just your physical, yeah. but also, you know, your, your brain health. So fulfillment, happiness in life, um, performance, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to brain, brain performance. But then also recently, a lot of people are asking a lot of questions about longevity. 
especially in pickleball, yeah. you know, yes. as yeah. the demographic continues to change, mm-hmm. but all ages play, but a lot of individuals will come and say, Hey, I heard yeah. that you know a lot about longevity. What role does pickleball mm-hmm. play in it? And how yeah. can I age in a way cognitively my brain's working well, I can perform, I can play pickleball yeah. and I'm healthy and I'm happy. So yeah. Get a lot of those questions. Well, um, obviously you know this, but you know, as a coach myself, I do it full time. I, you know, most of the players, um, just on statistics, they, you know, they're 50 to 60 to 70. So I have a lot of older clients. I do have a lot of younger ones too, but, um, I just think that first of all, it's just really cool that they can do something that they that is just so fun to them. But again, what's the interesting thing about this sport too? I I think it's a little bit different than others is like a lot of these people, they may have some backgrounds, um, with tennis or racquetball or something, but I would say 50% or maybe even more haven't really played any sport and they, and they could come in and do this kind of thing. Like what, what are your, what are your thoughts about, about that? Oh, it is a sport that you can pick up and yeah. play anywhere, anytime. You don't have a lot of equipment. But like you said, it's something, even if you're not athletic, you can still play. <laughs> yeah. Now, the bonus of that is, yeah. and, and what a lot of research is saying, especially when it comes to pickleball or, or sports that are similar, is it's the social aspect. So a lot of yes. these, um, we'll say more mature individuals, okay. especially through COVID, are lonely. We know yeah. that loneliness is considered the new cigarette smoking. Yeah. You know, it loneliness really is like you're smoking 10 cigarettes a day. It's terrible for people. And this is a way that people can get out. And, and think about it. There's really no other sport that's like it. Because yeah. you go and you put your paddles up and you're playing with people you have no idea who they are. Yeah. Never met before. And you're introducing yourself. You're laughing. You're talking. So it is really during a pandemic that just was a wave of depression and loneliness and a lot of anxiety. All of a sudden, as we start coming out, people are having friends who've never had friends before. And one of them is me. I mean, I work so much studying, I'm traveling. And it was funny after COVID, all my kids were like, especially with the pickleball, like, Uh dad, you had like six friends over today. Like you have friends. Wow. (laughs) You know, that's what I said. It's true. Would you say that during your working career, I know, I know you worked really hard and stuff. Did you not have a lot of like those kind of activities and stuff even before then? Oh, rarely. I was, uh, like if, if it was, it was through tennis, but it was mostly singles. So you'd go, but you know, you never talk. It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. I was a gym guy. I was a triathlon runner, biker. So not, yeah. None of those you're, you're really forming any real isolated relationships. Yeah. And I mean, I had good friends and I talked to high school friends, college friends, and even friends in the neighborhood, Uh but where you are texting each other a couple times a week, who's going, who's not, it's, it really, for a lot of people is absolutely life changing. So a lot of people will say, in fact, fact, I was in Wickenburg Mm -hmm. um, at the Troon, you know, kind of senior living, I shouldn't call it 55 plus living. Some friends were in town. So we went out to dinner. And we went and sat by the pickleball courts out in, in Wickenburg. And where is that Arizona? Yeah. It's, Arizona's okay. about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, just near a little bit near Flagstaff. Got and it. what was amazing about it is people would come up just by themselves mm-hmm. and they would join in and join playing. Yeah. And it was so fun to watch. And it, so not only are you getting the physical exercise and like yeah. you, you said, you know, people can play at any skill level, but yeah. all of a sudden they have friends and so the feeling of, even if I'm maybe not very good at this, yeah. there are other people who aren't good, but we're friends and I'm meeting people. And then yeah. you find people who are similar to you much easier that way. Yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, that's obviously why we love this sport. I, I've oh, seen, yeah. I read many stories and I have a thing too, where I'm trying to actually accumulate these stories so I could read them, like how they've changed. And write a book. Yeah, maybe. There you um, go. And, and cha- they've changed a lot of lives, but what, what does it do on the, um, I guess like the brain chemical side with, with just like you said, you know, there's a lot of people coming out of depression or isolation and things like that. When you do find like, it could be pickleball, it could be not, but when you find social things, how does that actually work? Like, like mm-hmm. wh- what does that do to the brain? You said something to the, along the lines of like being isolated is like smoking, like, Oh yeah, it's oh, terrible. 10 packs a day. Or you said something like it. So w- walk me through that. Um, like, People can listen to that like, oh, what, I mean, what does that mean? Or, and, you know, mm-hmm. but what is like, why don't you kind of expand on that? Well, as humans, we are social animals. We really are. We like to run in packs. We like to have friends. We depend on each other for a lot of different things. 
Yeah. But unfortunately, our world, and in fact, let me give you an example. About 60 years ago, there was a research study done asking people, if you had to call someone in the middle of the night mm. and something was going wrong, okay. how many people could you call? And the, the response was about five. So they did the same research study again about two years ago and said, if you, know, you had an emergency in the middle of the night and you, oh, you knew wow. you could call someone, yeah. the answer was less than one. Now you're saying, how's it less than one? Yeah. Because some people had zero yeah. people. Now, wow. and, and the sad thing is when you think about loneliness and not, you know, and social and, yeah. and why it applies to pickleball is that we often don't know. People may come out, you may even be in a group and, yeah. you know, even though you're around people, you still feel somewhat isolated. But why it works so well with pickleball is because social wise, when you're out there with other people yeah. and you're playing or you're waiting, you have your paddles up and you're yeah. talking, yeah. what's being released are things like serotonin. Now, oftentimes okay. serotonin, the chemical in the brain is known as kind of like the love hug yeah. drug, okay. but it's also the social drug of connection. Okay. So when I have serotonin running through, then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I feel a connection to you yeah. that, oh, we might be friends. I start to confide in you and tell you about my family or yeah. things that I enjoy or what the latest movie is. Yeah. And so it releases the chemicals. Now Got it right. also releases another chemical called dopamine and that's the yeah. pickleball aspect of mm -hmm. it. So you're doing, you're learning a new skill. You want to win, you're Got playing it. aggressive. So yeah. when you're learning, dopamine's released and dopamine's this motivation. It's the get up and move type of chemical for yeah. your brain, what we consider good chemicals. Yeah. And so you're getting both when you're playing pickleball. And so for a lot of people who are very lonely, it's solving a problem that's really what the World Health Organization is considering yeah. an epidemic of loneliness. And yeah. so pickleball's combating it big yeah. time. And that's, I think when people say, why is it growing so much? I don't get it. Mm. I tell them, oh, I've got the answer. And one of them is yeah. because it's helping people feel like they belong. They have a community, yeah. no matter what skill yeah. level you are. No, that's super awesome. And uh, I've heard this before, but you know, just listening to some reading th certain things, kind of like, I don't know, so, so, like CrossFit for some reason mm -hmm. has some sort of, as in some correlation with pickleball, as in um, like when you meet somebody random, right? Like, you know, like you can be in the grocery store and you find out they play pickleball. There's like instant connection. Right, right. Like even, even like I'm a coach or whatever, but like, even if like you're, you're I'm sure when you meet somebody, it's like, oh, like, where do you play? Or, or right. you know, it's just like, there's not many subjects to like, you know, it could be like a random subject. Like, oh, I have a dog. Oh, great. Like you have a dog, you know, but there's not many subjects where it's just like instant. I don't know. Connection. You know what I mean? And, and so, think about this too. Think yeah. about Lots of times people will go, and let's say you even go with another person. You go to Gilbert yeah. Regional Park or yeah, you're, yeah. you're playing somewhere. That you will just go up and put your paddle in with people you have no idea who yeah. they are and start playing with them. Even if you maybe come with another individual yeah, yeah. and you start talking to them. It's like going to a restaurant and going up to someone and yeah. saying, I'm going to join you and sit and eat dinner with you. It would be crazy. Yeah, I, but yeah, pick a ball right. and think about it. Yeah. Can you think of another sport that's really like that, that you have that quick connection that it's just this open of, hey, come and be involved with yeah. me and, and let's do something. And so it's just, it's such a benefit of pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good. Um, let's see here. I, I do have a couple of questions sure. here. Um, and this might just be bouncing around. Sure. Okay. I'm all about but, it. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll navigate through, but, um, so a lot of the listeners here, uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about the brain and how that, you know, how you can help the viewers get better, but just certain specific, like aspects here. So like we, we get, I get questions all the time about reaction time. Okay. So like how can pickleball, this is a question we've gotten from a viewer or just a general question. How can pickleball players improve their reaction time on the court? And how does that relate to the brain or how can it relate to the brain? So obviously a lot of the people I work with and I do have, I have a pro, I have some processes or processes or whatever yeah. you call it, but on how you can certain drills and things that you can improve, um, but I'm sure that, you know, in your expertise, I, kn I know that you have like, and as you get older in age, your reaction mm -hmm. time does slow down. Is there anything people can do out there to, to improve it or, or keep it or anything? Oh, absolutely. So let's okay. kind of go cool. and we can talk about some different yeah. things. And there's some new research on this. Now, why pickleball? One of the reasons why pickleball is so good for the brain is because it is a slow game and a fast game mm. and it changes rapidly, which the brain loves. Really? So, you know, you're dinking, you're going slow and all of a sudden it speeds up and it's, you know, triple, triple the speed. 
And so what happens okay. in the brain is remember that anytime you're doing anything new or you're playing any activity is yeah. the neural networks in the brain are flowing. So they're like rivers that the more you've done something, the deeper the, the groove is of the water to go down. Mm. So same as with the brain, the more you do an activity, yeah. the easier it is for the body movement, for your brain to know what to do. So the first thing to say is always, if you practice it all the time and use some of yeah. these processes, which you know, yeah. you've shared in other videos and things that yeah. that is one way to okay. absolutely increase your reaction time. Now there are other things that are new coming out. In fact, just in February, there's a new research coming out wow. ready for this. I'm I, I should, I should get some payback for this. <laughs> okay. One of the best things that you can do okay. for your, I'll give you two things you can do for your okay. action time. Number one, eat a handful of blueberries every morning and every night. And what they found is, you know, there's heart health, there's brain health, helps with oh. inflammation, all these things. Yeah. But there's something that blueberries have, the flavonoids in them, that mm. increases your reaction time. So, And this is backed up by studies? This is backed up by hard research and data okay. that it improves your reaction time. So I'm telling wow. people, now, are you going to eat a handful of blueberries and then go to... And be like Ben Johnson. And be like Ben Johnson. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, yeah. it's not going to happen. But okay. for... For your speed that you're used to. Wow. Now, here's what you do okay. if you practice. Now, should, can we talk about practice for a minute and we can yeah. even add more on? Yeah. So, the problem sometimes, well, first problem, you know, with pickleballs, everybody just wants to play and no one wants to drill. Yeah. To drill, which yeah. we all get that. Yeah. But if you, like, if you drill 15 minutes a day, yeah. it's going to just quadruple your performance rather than saying, I'm going to drill one hour or two hours a week. When we talk about those neural yeah. networks and pathways in the brain, yeah. they are created faster when you do smaller amounts of practice every day that can are continuous versus okay. one big day of lots of practice. Really? Because what happens That's is, oh, because yeah, so you're, you're doing the activity, the neural networks. Now the change doesn't occur when you're doing it. What happens is you're doing the activity, uh. your brain's registering what's happened, the muscle memory. And then when you go to sleep at night, which is the number three thing you should do, when you go to sleep that night, mm. the brain then works out. It's the best house cleaner in the world. The brain clears out all the overwhelm, all the stuff that you don't need, yeah. keeps what was important, and then puts that in the long-term memory part of the brain, builds those yeah. neural networks. And so if you're doing something every day, that neural network and the synapses and the firing are built that evening and then all of a sudden you become faster and faster. So hmm. I always tell people practice less time every day, but do it every day. Even if you go out for 10 minutes and you have one shot you want to make, do it 10 minutes every day. You're going to see just improvement substantially faster than that, if you do, do a longer time period. That's really interesting. And, and maybe that's, I don't know, does that kind of coincide with like habits, like creating better habits? Absolutely. Um, okay. So this is what I get all the time. Um, a lot of players, they... Um, and it's just crazy. Like, especially I run these two day intensives, right? People fly in, they train with me two days. It's a really good time. They learn a lot. And, um, they, one of the things, or one of the things I ask them like, Oh, how can I get better? Well, obviously over the two days that we spend time with each other, we're going over footwork, we're going over technique, all these things that, and I write them action plan and things like this is the things that you and it's have brilliant. To, you do that. Yeah. Thanks. These are, these are the things that you have to do. Um, you're going to have to take with you because my job not essentially is done, but like I'm setting you a path. Like if you follow these exact things, then you're, there's no way you're not going to improve. So a lot of them, like they're gung ho about pickleball, right? Um, especially the ones that come and see me. So I ask them how many days they're playing a week. So usually it's like three to seven, right? Right. It's like a ridiculous amount. So one of the things, um, because you're, you're right on obviously about the drilling versus playing. It's a lot more fun to play, but you near, nearly don't get any practice, especially if you're working on particular shots. Um, but so what I usually tell them is like, look, if you're just playing like, if you're playing like six days a week, just take one or two of those days to drill and then just go ahead, have a ball the other days. But so that's what I usually tell them just so it's just like easier. But so, but what you're saying though, is you think that, or, or maybe it might be a, a more, more of a benefit if they just take like 15 to 20 minutes, if they play six times a week, Yep. just do 15 or 20 minutes before or after they play. Absolutely. And okay. I would, I would do it before. Now here's why you want to do it before and yeah. 15, if they, and, and I should say this one shot, like mm. dinking backhand, yeah. 
for 15, 20 minutes. Because yeah. what happens is oftentimes is we practice one thing and then we practice yeah. the other thing. But if you're just doing that short amount of time, your yeah. brain is so focused, there's full attention on yeah. learning that skill, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Because mm -hmm. think about when you're doing one thing and working with them, yes. they get better instantly. Yeah. because they're so focused. Yeah. So if they just focus that and maybe say for that one shot, it's a shot I want to get better. This week, I'm going to practice it three times and I'm going to practice one other shot two times. Drill 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. They will see substantial changes. And the best thing that you do, one of the best things is the action plan because the action yeah. plan reminds them to stick to what they should do because yeah. in all the research of performance research, and when we say performance research, we're talking yeah. sports, music, mm -hmm. chess players, people who memorize numbers, Rubik's cubes, all these people have been studied. Yeah. And they found that the attention and focus should be on one thing at a time because then the brain gets overwhelmed. Yeah. We can't remember that much. And all of a sudden we're thinking of my footwork and then where my paddle should be and how yes. hard I'm hitting it and the direction instead of I'm just focusing on this one yeah. thing. What do you think about this? Um, players ask me all the time, obviously. So I train them. We have a great two days. We go through basically break down all their aspects of their game. And they are a little too a lot <laughs> overwhelmed with the information. Oh, sure. And one of the things that I saw the gap, why, why I think what I offer is way different than anyone else is the action plan, the follow-up emails. And I, I do strategy breakdown analysis. So I, I do multiple things after the fact and what I tell them, um, and m maybe you can have a good, a good or better suggestion here, but they're working on all these things. Let's say they're, they're their footwork, right? Then we're talking about, okay, your backswing, right? So there's several things, even in one stroke, that um, they're trying to think about, right? Um, and this is why I tell them to isolate in a drill because in the game, it's like there's a lot going on. But even in the drills, I just usually tell them to focus on like one or two things max mm -hmm. um, because you can't focus on like five different things. Okay, backswing, wrists, like all this. Like what would you... You know, if you're working with somebody, I mean, would that be spot on? Like, and you know, there's several things in a stroke. Like, what would you say? Like, just work on one thing at a time? Or? Well, you're spot on because, okay. you know, people can only, I mean, we have best case scenarios because people yeah. are coming in for two days. Now, there are a lot of benefits to that because yeah. the social aspect of people yeah. they're meeting, they get to be good friends with people. Mm -hmm. They're also playing a whole bunch of different players versus people that they're playing yeah. over and over with again, you yeah. know, in their hometown. Yeah. But what I like about which, what you do is you'll, for like 45 minutes to an hour, work on one shot. Yeah. Everybody's working on that one shot. So the brain starts to learn it. And then, you know, you can create an action plan around that because it's their responsibility to then go home and say, I remember what I told I need to do, what it looks like when it's right, because that's remembered. And now they just need to practice it because yeah. no one's going to get great. What you're providing is the tools yeah, to get exactly. great. And if you break it up like that, and I also love, cause you do some other things. Yeah. You know, that like rest their brain, give them a chance to get a break, socialize. Yeah. yeah. And also just digest the information of what does this mean to my, cause I'll tell you after two days, you know, they leave much better than they ever came. Yeah. And so the benefits there, yeah. it's just now a matter of, Hey, if you do that for three months in a row and come yeah. back after three months, we're going to see you jump up from a three Oh to three, five, three, five to four Oh four, yeah. four, five. Okay. Yeah. No, it's really cool. Yeah. I just, I wanted to get your You're right on. opinion on that. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, here's another question that I, we usually get, and I've done several videos on this, but I know, um, as soon as I, you agreed to come, thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Um, but, um, the serving yips, Yes. you know what that is, right? Oh, okay. I think everybody knows what it okay. is. Okay. So I I mean, uh, I just wasn't sure, yeah. but, oh, but, yeah. but, uh, it's definitely, um, you know what I've heard and I agree, but maybe you can dive in down into this, but obviously it's more mental than it is anything else technique or, or anything. So I've worked with several people. Um, obviously technique is really important and being able to re repeatedly do the same motion is really important, but what is that block? Like, what can you say? And maybe I know that they have this in golf, but maybe this is a, a thing in other, just in the mental brain space, like that kind of thing where, Someone can make the shot, but for whatever reason, it just goes out the window. It sprays. Now they have to go to a backhand serve. You know what I mean? No. You've heard it many times. So how, like people with the yips, what can they do? What is it um, mm -hmm. chemically in the brain? And what? how can we like slowly work through that? Oh, I, I think this question is brilliant because it happens in yeah. everything. It happens in every sport. Yeah. It happens in the work that we do. Yeah. I mean, it happens in our relationships with family. We have all these 
little events that begin to happen. And what it is, is I would say it's 90% because people know how to do the shot. Mm, yeah. And we're yeah. sitting there saying to ourselves, this is not a hard shot. Yeah. But what happens is we use different parts of the brain. So for example, your prefrontal cortex, which if you were to take your hand and put it over your forehead, yeah. it's just like just three millimeters, it's like the size of a, of a card. And, and wow. what it does is it's your working memory. So your analytical function, your thinking function, your decision-making okay. part of your brain. Got it. And when we have what's considered the chatter in our brain, and here's what the chatter sounds like. The chatter may be, this is the third serve you've missed. Mm. Oh my gosh. Now, why is there a spin on my serve? And there wasn't a spin before when I practiced at home 20, 30 mm. times. And okay. so we have all this chatter. The chatter yeah. could be now my partner's mad at me because I'm missing the serves and we were ahead three points. Um, oh, now I'm embarrassing myself because I'm playing with four O players and I'm a three, five player and I wanted to play with them more, but now I can't. So there's all this chatter that's going on in the brain. So the secret, and, and I'm giving the mm. easy answer, yeah. one of the easiest yeah. is to stop the overwhelm, stop the chatter in the brain and move more into flow. And the flow is where we're silencing our brain or quieting our brain and having other thoughts that replace it. Okay. So what, so all those, um, the chatter you talked about, every single one that I heard you say was negative. Oh yeah. Right. So, oh wait, can we stop there for a second? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, let me say something that people have every day in their life. Oh, I'm not. And I've heard this. I can't even tell you how many hundreds of times working with executives. Yeah. Yeah, We're yeah. talking executives who are very successful. Yes. Um, yeah. Dr. Bray, I'm not smart enough. I didn't go to the right school, so I yeah. can't get this promotion. Um, yeah. I'm overweight. Why would anybody date me because mm. I'm overweight? I don't have the right friendship group. I don't make enough money. Yeah. I, I don't live in the right neighborhood. I mean, we all have, and if you think about it, yeah. you could probably write off, we won't make you say it out loud, have your, what you're saying in your brain, that chatter mm. that comes throughout our whole life. And yeah. oftentimes when we yeah. pick up new things and are learning new things, new chatter begins. Now, there's a reason the chatter is so effective. There's really two reasons. Number one, you have about 65,000 thoughts per day. And out of those thoughts, 70% of those thoughts are the exact same that they were yesterday and the day before and the day before. 75. 70, about 70%. So, so, so 30% is new. Right. And the other is just right. the old habits and the old thinking of, okay. I'm not good enough. I'm overweight. I'm not in shape. I'm not wow. rich enough. I'm not smart enough. I, I don't have a great personality. I'm not yeah. you know, handsome or attractive enough. Yeah. And it builds. So what it's, the, remember we talked about the neural networks. Yes. All of a sudden the neural networks for those negative thinking that you thought for 20 years, yeah. 30 years, you're not even 30 yet, I'm just, but you know, yeah. that the grooves are so deep in those neural networks that they immediately come to the front part of the brain. They immediately are there okay. and they come before things like, I'm so good at this. Like my serve's getting okay. better and better. And that's the difference. We'll talk about growth mindset and fixed mindset. Okay. But, um, it, it is the chatter that, and it gets, I mean, I study this all the time. It still gets at me. Yeah. It, the chatter will still start, especially if, well, no know, one is, no one guess, is immune. Yeah. No one is immune. No one is immune Got it. at all. So what are the techniques? So let's say for the, for the service yips, right? I mean, they know they can make it. The chatter starts. What? What are some techniques? Okay. What, like, what do you, what can you, what are, do you just replace it with positive things? Do you try not to think about anything? I think that's kind of what I go to. Just, I tell players just to kind of, you know, just, just like they're thinking like about everything. Like they're, oh, here, here. No, no, just, just hit the ball. <laughs> so, but I don't know. What, what do you, what would you, you say about trying to get to a point where you, you're minimizing the chatter or, or get that out? Well, one of the first things you can do, and I'm going to kind of steal this from you okay. is you get out and you practice it so that you can see. And oftentimes you can tell yourself, yeah. and there is a big difference between verbal and just thinking it in your brain. Oh, I yeah. can do this shot. Like I'll go out and serve a hundred serves and maybe I miss three. I thought, oh, 97% yes. of 97 of my serves we're in, this is a shot I know how to do. So then when you're playing. So this is what happens. So you right? build that foundation. But then they go there yes. and then it all breaks down. All that, breaks well, down. I, I hear this, right? Yeah. And and, and I've, I see it often. So so what do we do then? Yeah, so you have the nerves, you have the brain chatter. And so let me give you just a couple things you can do in the moment. One of the best things you can do is you stop and you take a couple deep breaths. Yeah. Now, yeah. we've heard about breath work a lot, but I'm telling you, if you wanna change your brain in less than a minute, take deep breaths, even 30 seconds to a minute. It changes the function. It changes the um, electricity in your brain immediately. It's one of the fastest things that we can do to change the way our brain is working from. I'm nervous. This is going bad. I'm embarrassed to all of a sudden calming down, 
saying and telling yourself, really? I yesterday I did 97 serves mm. on right. I can do this. Even if I miss one, it's okay. And mm. silencing the chatter so you can focus, pay attention on that one thing. It's like the practice, that, that neural network that says I can do this. And what happens is if people talk themselves through it and it might take a server two, then once they get one, it just, the momentum begins and they don't miss anymore. So yeah. it's a practice. The problem is, is people buy into the chatter. They buy into the talk. Yeah. Then it changes their brain, changes the chemicals that are released in their brain. Then they get nervous, epinephrine, um, adrenaline goes through their body, their heart's racing, they're sweating. And it's, you've seen it, it's over. And you see it in the pros. Yeah. I mean, we've seen meltdowns amongst the pros, so no one is immune. Yeah. It's just a matter of who can move that pendulum over to, this mm -hmm. is gonna help me perform at my best versus I'm giving into the chatter and the thoughts and the overwhelm of my brain. Yeah. So the likes of the Ben Johns, Anna Lee Waters, the players who are on the top that are very, very consistent, they, and again, I've, we, we hear this all the time, but even in all sports, right? Like I would say in pickleball, but let's just, I mean, we could talk about any sport. They, you know, the top, let's say 10 or to 15 or so players, they have around the same talent, right? They're all very, very talented, right. but it's the, it's that edge. It's that mental game Absolutely. That, that just at the end of the day is what it squeaks out the wins. Oh, for sure. Anders right. Erickson, who's a, a performance researcher, he died about two years ago out of Florida State University. Yeah. He wrote the book Peak Performance, and he is one of the like formidable researchers on, I mean, 30 years of peak performance. In fact, yeah. Malcolm Gladwell stole some of his research, the 10,000 hour rule. You could become an expert in 10,000 okay. hours, yeah. switched a little bit. But okay. what Anders found, and it didn't matter whether it was sports or music or chess or whatever it was, that the difference between that top 10% is literally mental. They can calm themselves down. They can fix the nerves. Everybody feels it, wow. but they can control it better. Control the thoughts it. are different. They've created new neural pathways and the thoughts are different. And when things aren't going well, they can adjust. I mean, the doll is one of the best examples of someone who can be down two sets, yeah. come back and, and still win yeah. based upon that mental acuity yeah. and its focus attention and really, you know, I, I wish I could, I could do, I'm really working on it to, yeah. to be able to do things like that. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I guess here's another question. It's kind of like the same thing, but you just tell me if it's almost the same thing, like the yips, but when, you know, a lot of these players, they're playing, um, they could get down on yourself, especially like when you're playing tournaments. Right. And there's a different feeling when you're like way up and way down and maybe tied, mm -hmm. right? And it's really close. You, there's a lot of emotions going, a lot of different things. But let's say you're playing, you're not playing your best or you're, you know, you're, you've missed a couple in a row. Mm -hmm. um, same kind of procedures there, like deep breaths and trying, like what, what, what do you do to try to turn that around? Because you know, when you miss several shots in a row, you, you start to, I guess as the chatter comes back. Oh yeah. So Full like, force tidal wave Yeah, of, of chatter. And with pickleball, remember, it's not just the chatter about yeah. yourself. It's the chatter. If you're playing doubles mixed or, yeah. or men, women's that, that, oh my yeah. goodness, they're mad at me. I've missed these shots. It's my fault that we're, that we're yeah. now down. So it is very similar but the techniques are the same of take some deep breaths in between points, literally some deep breaths for 30 seconds. It resets the brain. What it allows is all those chemicals, the negative chemicals like cortisol, mm. it's releasing the epinephrine adrenaline that's speeding up your, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your sweating. It really stops that moves through so we can move to some of the better chemicals around mm. performance, top performance, and just saying things like, okay, I'm going to yeah. fix the game. Now, remember, we all have bad days. Yeah. There are days we're on, there are days we're off, yeah. but you can still increase and stop that sliding. And you've noticed people who can't do it, they just get worse and worse yeah. and worse and worse versus yeah. you see some people and then all of a sudden they, they change it. And, and a lot of what we mm. say to ourselves now, a lot of people have made fun of positive psychology and I look in the mirror and say positive things. But if you say things like, I'm so grateful I'm out here, I'm at a tournament, I'm with friends, who in the world is out playing in this beautiful weather tournament? I'm here with friends. We're going to go out yeah. tonight and eat dinner. Yeah. And you see the benefits. It changes the chemicals, which changes the way you think, which changes your behavior and your actions. It's like a waterfall that happens. Got it. And so we have to change what we're thinking about. And you have to replace it because your brain's going to think of things. You just have to replace what, what it's thinking.
Okay. So two things, the breathing, does that, um, is the, is it because of the oxygen? Is that, is that what, it, is that the main thing? Is well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. Okay. Like it could be so your nose, could be through your mouth. I'm always telling people, do you want to do the deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth for those who are yoga, huh. you know, who do a lot of, of breath work. So it is a lot of the oxygen, okay. but it's also allowing the brain to take what we call a pause. Huh. And so the oxygen's going in. It's great for the brain. It's great for the body. It's calming the mind. And well, it changes you're not really, the electricity. You're not really thinking about anything when you're, when you're taking right. deep breaths. Is that, that you're be, focused all on that. Got it. You're that's focused on, and that's why okay. a lot of times people Got you'll it. see people like, um, even some of the pros, they're tapping their foot before they serve. They have the, you know, a yeah. little ritual that they yeah. do yeah, yeah. because it's calming and focusing the brain is Got what it. it's what it's doing. And then you did mention, I forgot what you called it. The positive affirmation, like look in the mirror, that yeah, kind positive of psychology, psychology. Yeah. Is there a difference between, I mean, do they correlate or is there, is, is there a difference between that and, and doing what you're saying? Well, or it can it go overboard if you're like it, oh, always positive, like, well, oh, like, you know what I mean? It, it's, you know, it's a catch 22. Now, positive okay. psychology, most of it comes out of the University of Pennsylvania with Dr. Martin Seligman, who's a brilliant man. Yeah. And at first we laughed at a lot of these things. Like mm -hmm. I can do this. Now there's something we call self-efficacy and self-efficacy is the belief that you can do something. And whenever you start something and you probably see this every day and you, you can yeah. teach this to, to your, to your um, people who are, who are taking lessons from you yeah. is that there's a moment when all of a sudden they believe they can do something. Yeah. And it is for a human being. It's an amazing moment because your brain switches and clicks into, Oh, I don't think I can do this too. Wait a second. I can do that shot. I can play this game. I can move up to a three, five. I can win a tournament yeah. and the, and the potential for individuals is unlocked, not just in the brain, but right down to the DNA that this potential is unlocked and people realize yeah. I can do this. And it just lights up the brain. And it's one of the best feelings that a human has is I, I can do this. Like this is something that I thought I could never do. And I could do it. That's why people run marathons, do Ironmans, mm. hike the grand Canyon. Yeah. Um, get in pickleball tournaments because they want to test their potential. No, that's really, yeah. I never thought about it that way about the, all the Ironmans. Yeah. Those guys are like really, really crazy, but I guess it just gives them a sense of, I mean, that accomplishment or that you've heard of David Goggins. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, he's, he's done some, I, I mean, I've listened to a lot of his stuff, but, uh, when he talks about that kind of stuff, it's just, Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's really crazy. Right. And people think yeah. I could never do it, but then yeah. they think, yeah. I could never play pickleball and go be in a tournament. I would fall flat on my face. So everybody's yeah. doing different things yeah. that we're accomplishing. Yeah. No, that's really good. Um, um, on the fact of like, uh, you know, just again, we deal with older players and yep. things like that. I teach a lot of them and just a lot of the listeners are, are, you know, they're retired and, and they're playing. They really love this game. Um, one of this, uh, this question here can, uh, Playing pickleball uh, help prevent or delay cognitive decline, and if so, how? Oh, it's like I planted that question. I wish I would have. No, that is the perfect question because yeah. absolutely it can decrease cognitive decline, but yet it increases so many other things. Now, the okay. benefits, like I said before, is number one, movement, one of the pillars of brain health. They're moving in a way they probably never moved before. So just movement in general. Just like, movement. like, and, and we're learning. Yeah. that you don't need to go to the gym for an hour and go all out. If you go out and walk for 20 minutes, there are very similar benefits and some of them not even that much different. In fact, they found people yeah. who will go out and walk half an hour a day, 20 minutes, half an hour a day are more healthier, yeah. lose more weight than people who join the gym in January, go really hard. Yeah. You know, it, it just doesn't work. But another reason that it helps with, with decreasing cognitive incline and here, and let's flip that for a second. Cause that also means you're going to increase your cognitive ability so you can learn faster. You can remember more than you did before. Um, your brain also is faster at thinking, making critical decisions, mm. your reaction time. So there are all these benefits from, from pickball. So movement is one, the social is number two. And I might even say, depending on the person, social could be number one, but social, yeah, because yeah. you know, we're out talking, we're meeting yeah. people, things like that. And, um, and the third is, is you're learning something yeah. now that right there is so important, especially as we age really? and we get in our fifties or sixties, do we have to continue learning now? What so we, it could be anything though, anything. just learning in general, anything. Just, now there are two things okay. that huh. do more than anything else. So there, if you learn a language, 
That's one of the best things you can do really? to increase your cognitive ability, keep well, your cognitive ability. Why is that? I just think it's there it, studies on that. Then I guess. it encompasses so much of your brain and different aspects of your brain. Got it. Um, second one, you want to make a guess? Music. So like playing oh. the piano, um, yeah. you know, just guitar. Yeah. And the third would be something around sports that you're doing consecutively and continuously because. Think about it. You're always, you could learn at pickleball. There's so many shots you can improve. Mm -hmm. So when you're learning something, dopamine's released, which is that great chemical. Yeah. You're learning something which makes you feel good. You're creating meaning and fulfillment in your life because you go out and play and afterwards, you know, yeah. even sometimes afterwards, even if you didn't play great, you're still like, I had a good day. Yeah. It's nice outside. We had yeah, a good yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. And I feel better than if I used to stay home and get up yeah. and just sit there and read the newspaper. No. Yeah. It's really good, man. Um, now, I don't know. I guess the segue, you yeah. have your own podcast, actually. I do. I do. Uh, Chris. So Not uh, as good as yours. It's uh, not as good as yours. Way more listeners, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I have like 400 podcasts. That's why. Oh. There's so many of okay. them. Okay. But uh, what do you, so what do you talk about on yours? Uh, it's, it says here that um, the doctor, do you go by Dr. CK, Bray? Okay. So what is that? That, that is a name that caught on. So I always oh, go by Chris. Really? And so what okay. happened is, is when I finished my second PhD, my family to make fun of me would call me Dr. CK. Well, at that time I had all these teenagers in the house. And so it really? caught on that all of a sudden all these kids and all my, my kids, friends, Hey, Dr. CK. Hey, Dr. CK. Oh, and then wow, that's funny. it just caught on and it was hilarious because uh, it just spread because it kind of has a little bit of a ring to it. Okay. Where does the K come from though? Oh, Christopher Kent. So middle oh, name. Oh, got it. Christopher got it. Got Kent, it. Kent. So okay. CK. So it says your show is 20 minutes science and research based yeah. podcast that aims to provide the information you need to create a better life and career. So you talk about these kinds of things yes. and uh, you share, uh, I'm sure all the all the new and upcoming studies and things like that. Yeah. One of the questions that I had here, um, and 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 maybe you have the answer right away, but maybe you could think about it. Okay. I just, you You're know, trying to stump me. Is that what? No, you're no, because because <laughs> I just I just I just really want to know this. I think this is interesting. Um, in the last decade or so, um, because there's a lot of things that change, but in the last decade, what is one or maybe two of the most interesting studies or findings that have to do with the with brain or health like i mean oh, trans yeah. like really like you know like like something really big comes out and and there's a, something else i want to get to and ask your opinion about but what are like one or two studies just really that transformed or changed the game on on like brain science mm -hmm. health or anything okay i'll i'll give two okay. i'll give one that made a ripple effect throughout all of we say research really you know okay. and, and the world kind of focusing on two different areas and that would be around telomeres. What now, is that? Um, I don't know what that is. I, here's what I'm going to have people look up the word telomere, but okay. I'll tell you a little bit about it. So telomere. telomeres, um, okay. they're at the, they're at the end of your chromosomes and what they do is they're like, huh. they're like little aglets, like, you know, on your shoes, shoot, you yeah. know, your shoelaces at the very end, they yes. have that little hard part. Yeah. Well, what, um, two women researchers found brilliant and there's a book that, that people can look, um, yeah. uh, around the telomeres that the shorter your telomere is, okay. the quicker you are going to age in cognitive ways, physically, physically. mentally. Um, it, it just, you just ages you faster. Whereas telomeres, if they're kept longer through like what we talked about, the eight pillars of brain health and things like that, that you live longer, you're happier, you age better, you're more healthy as you age. Mm -hmm. And so that really sent a lot of ripple effects around longevity. Now, longevity is becoming key because we're learning so much about how do yes. we age, yes. but not just age physically in, in a uh, great way. And there's, yes. you know, I'll, do, I'll, I'll give you a couple books you can put on, on the podcast okay. of some yeah. great things, especially yeah. if people are 50 plus, mm -hmm. that they should be doing every day, like stretching, eating certain things, good, good healthy foods. But it's the longevity of we can age so much better than we used to based upon all the information that, that we have. So that would, I'd say a big ripple effect. Now, one of my favorite. So hold on real quick. Sure, sure. What are they called? The tel telomeres. So telomeres. So can you do those? You can grow them and oh, shrink them you, or. Yeah. You shrink them by stress, anxiety, smoking, bad health, no exercise, no sleep, bad relationships, isolation. But that's mm -hmm. only a start. That's just a few. Yeah. So everything, Interesting. which it's hilarious because, you know, whenever I talk to individuals, yeah. we talk about sleep, 
oh, no one's getting seven, eight hours. Very few people are, you know, especially if you're a parent of, of, of young children, yeah, you, you yeah, get that. Yeah. But isolation, no friends, stress at work, mm. depression, anxiety, you know, we're seeing that spike. And so um, that's a lot of the reason. Now, there are tests that you can take, and I'd give it about another eight months to a year that's going to be very inexpensive, maybe $100, okay. that you can test your telomeres really? and see kind of what your actual age is. Now, do they, do they measure it? By nanometers? No, I wish they did. No, or, they, they, or, you know what I mean? Like, no, how, I wish what, they did that. It's, that. it's through a blood test. They're able to tell oh, okay. just how healthy your telomeres are. Really? Interesting. So, and it's okay. Elizabeth Bradburn is one of the authors. Oh, I mean, they won, they won a Nobel prize for this. That's wow. how, that's how big it was to, to the world. I mean, it was huge. Wow. And, and we're just getting research around longevity now that is changing yeah. the, the face or really changing how, what we believe about aging and getting older and inflammation and sugar and, um, you know, our insulin levels and all these oh, man. things. Okay. Let's talk about sugar real quick. Okay. Let's do it. So Chris, right. <laughs> um, that's something I really like and we I all like it. And I've been, uh, I've been really thinking about, uh, you know, giving it up. <laughs> well, yeah. well to, ex to a certain extent, but, uh, all right, go ahead and tell me how bad sugar is. <laughs> Okay, so I All wouldn't right. I wouldn't give it up. Don't give it up okay. totally. I, but I but there are some things that you could replace. But okay. sugar is terrible. It's <laughs> it is so give it terrible. Up. Okay, so it's terrible for your brain. Okay. It's terrible for your heart. It's terrible uh, for your kidney, your liver. It causes uh, inflammation, which is known to cause the, all the cancers. I mean, uh, the list. But here's the thing: I am not one of those because, as you can see, I'm an ice cream connoisseur. Yeah. Um, but what you can do, and, and here's the very interesting thing is we're all different. Yeah. And, and this has yeah. come out in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. may Got process it. sugar much differently than mm -hmm. I process sugar. So you can get those blood glucose monitoring. I am a huge fan. A lot of the research around it is mm -hmm. very strong. Okay. You've seen people that have the glucose monitoring system. So I should get one. That mod and I say, get one for a month. Because what Just it does to is to see what yes your glucose what is it's, it glucose level is yeah what what your blood sugar level is is it low is it high and I will say it is life changing and I, I'm not under I'm not exaggerating at all so so like for example I you could eat a bucket of ice cream I could eat a bucket of ice cream and then our glucose levels would be different dep depending on how it absolutely how our body processes so sugar for me like ice cream for me okay my 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 glucose my sugar levels don't spike. <laughs> but my wife's spike huge, but oh, then I man. could eat certain types of bread spikes. Hers doesn't. Oh, so what so you're doing different foods then. is you're seeing for your body, which we're so different and our brains. I mean, every brain is different of every human who's ever lived. It, it's different. There's no brain. that's the same, same with your body. Hmm. And so you're learning for you. Uh Oh, blood spike or my blood sugar spiking. I need to, you know, see what did I eat? And so I always say, just kind of eat, you know, if I'm having dinner, I'm going to have pasta Got it. And, and just see, okay. And then if it does, is it the sauce? Is it the pasta? Wow. And you learn really in just a month. Cause they can be expensive. Now, a lot of doctors will just, Oh, are they? Prescribe are they? One. Not that. I mean, not that what are expensive. they? hundred bucks, hundred bucks. Okay. If that for a couple of them and they last like two or three weeks that you can keep them. Oh, on. I thought it was just, it's a thing that you can keep Oh, it's not a, it I doesn't think, stay forever because really? you, you, you staple it to your skin and I'll tell you, it, oh, you it, staple you know, but it, it doesn't hurt. Oh my God. Like the God. needles are like that long and I'm, we were freaking out when we first did it. You stay like, like you don't even that, feel it. It actually punctures your skin. You don't even feel it. I'm telling you, do I, you take a shower with it and, oh, you can do everything. They, they give you a little patch to put over it, but on your oh, phone, see, I'm not a needle guy. No, oh, I am telling man. you, I'm not a needle guy. You won't. In fact, when it happened, I didn't even know what happened. It. Like I think those little like shots, vaccines that you get that you're you're gonna you feel that way more than oh you're well, I don't this. Get, yeah I, I stay ah, away from those <laughs> yeah, me too me too so but what it's good is yeah. it's so good to see and it's on your phone so you can see and they'll do a little beep if your blood sugar is too low and you know you need to eat Interesting. so it gives you so much information for very inexpensive instead of going and getting these really expensive blood tests and it's costing wow. five six seven hundred dollars instead spend a hundred dollars. You can, your doctor most likely, and I'm saying, get the cheapest one. You don't need these fancy, yeah. you know, monitoring yeah. systems. Yeah. Just get the least expensive one you can find. Okay. Are there some that don't puncture the skin? I thought there's some, even Apple watches. Oh, they don't, they don't check blood sugar. No, they, they don't check blood. So you have to, that's like we have to, stuff, have, right? we have to have access okay. to the blood. All so right, you can do it. it. I'll, me. I'll do it. I will come and I will come and just <laughs> oh do it to gosh. you. I will do it. All right. All right. Leave, will watch. leave a comment below if you'd like to see that. <laughs> But that's if, if it's we a follow-up video. Yeah, if we don't get one million comments, then it's not happening. <laughs>
I'll get my, get my listeners on that. I'll get my listeners on it. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, no, no, really good. Anything you can, I don't know. I mean, there's more to talk about, Chris, but anything you, you can tell our, so you, you know our, our listeners, our viewers, mm-hmm. three simple things, um, and this could be a book, right, or whatever, or, uh, but three simple things that, that, that take five minutes or less a day. Okay, love it. That yep. somebody can actionably do tomorrow, every day. To improve, to improve their game um, or improve their life. Yeah, let's go. Let's just go life. Let's just go health. Okay, so know. your brain. I don't the, know. Okay, we'll we'll yeah. give three. Maybe we'll do four. Okay, I'll, I'll go through. We'll quick. do five. The number one thing that yeah. somebody can do is sleep. Okay. Did you know that the best performance drug is sleep? Is it true that some people need more or less sleep than others? Is that true? It's a lie. There, everybody says I can survive on five. And I worked in yeah. New York City. I I did that rat race for a, a good long time, where we were sleeping for four or five hours a night. Yeah, it is less than probably one percent of the population who cognitively are not affected. Okay, by getting less sleep. So for those less than one percent people, might be okay. But here's what's funny: everybody thinks. Yeah, they're, they are. They're, they're, I get and it. and I always say you're not. Unfortunately, you're yeah. you're not one of those people because I can give you a test. I mean, I can have you sleep four or five hours and your IQ is going to drop 15 points by the second day. Within a week, you're just literally, you can't even barely think. So mm. I encourage most people try to get seven, you know, most likely try to get eight hours of sleep because if you want to be a top performer, it is the number one predictor number one. of your performance okay. is how you sleep. And that's why, you know, when, when some of my friends and every once in a while, when, when we do work with athletes, mm. then what we're doing is that something we're looking at? How are you sleeping? Let's get you to that tournament early so you can get some good yeah. rest. You get acclimated. It's three hours ahead. It's a different time zone. So you need to get good sleep. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And let me just give you a couple. Okay. One, you need your REM sleep. You need time for the brain to clean itself out from the previous day. So re- REM, the REM, and yeah. that, that's like, it's a certain um, amount of time or something yes. where, yep. where then you're in deep sleep. Yep. You're in deep sleep. And a lot of things are occurring during the REM sleep. A lot of the brain structuring is occurring during that time. You know, you're, you're wanting a good amount. So maybe an hour or two, maybe even a little bit more that you're in that deep REM sleep. Um, and it's continuous. So sleep, if you're depressed, if you have anxiety, if you're stressed out sleep, and even if you can take a half an hour nap in the afternoon, take a half an hour nap. It's so so good for you. What are the studies on naps? Oh, well, the so, problem with naps is most of us who work in corporate can't, you know, okay. you can't take a nap. Yeah. But like for the people who have 30, 45 minutes, does, oh, it, does it help? Absolutely. Really? Like you never want to go over 20, 30 minutes because okay. then your brain starts to shut down, go to different aspects of sleep. So, but really? it, re- it refreshes, I like the word, it rejuvenates your body and your brain. So like 20 minutes tops. Oh yeah. Just it's cause it just settles the brain clears out a little bit, but you, most people I say sleep seven to eight hours. Now people say, how can I sleep better? Especially if you're more mature, 55 plus you have to have, and I beg for an hour, but most people only give me half an hour of where you're having a wind down time. So you turn off your phone, turn off your iPad, put away your Apple watch, turn the lights down low, read a book, do not watch Netflix because you're teaching your brain that habit of I'm winding down. It's ready for sleep. So, you know, you have, I always have, I have half an hour thing that I do. So I'm, I'm ready for, for sleep. So that's, that I'd say is the the number one. Now, number two, when we talk about practicing, okay. what Anders Ericsson and all the top performance researchers say is you should go hard for 60 to 90 minutes. And then after that 60 to 90 minutes of practice, like super hard, I want to get better. This shot really hard, 60 to 90 minutes. And then you need to take a break. And that break could be an hour. That break could be two hours. And this is for people who. What's the shortest break? Oh, the shortest break you can take if, well, here's the thing. If you do 90 minutes super hard, Okay. It's going to be hard to really focus and be deliberate, what got they call it. deliberate practice. So, so even some, within a half an hour to an hour, you couldn't do it. You're too it. tired. Got it. So sometimes, Chris, I drill for two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Is and is there is there a time frame like where it gets like over like too much? Like, I, is that what you're saying? Right. Like, it's it's good to take it in like full focus, go crazy for that time. And if if it's too long, if you're doing two or three hours, and does it actually hurt you in the long run? I don't think it hurts you, but you know, most likely that hard of a practice where you're so focused, you can't even really do it more than 90 minutes. So in that two hours, I bet you you have a half an hour to 45 minutes of super 
hard. And that's when the Got time it. flies by because you're so focused. You're like, Got wait it. a second. We were dinking or we were drilling or we were going Got back it. and forth. And I don't know where the 30, 45 minutes went. Yeah. So I just, uh, we just had Riley Newman on the podcast and I don't know, uh, you may have not listened to that, but one of the things that he does is he, he just goes two hours yeah. and that's it. And then there's a lot of the other pros that will play like four five, six, six hours. But he, when I first heard that, I was like, huh, that's so interesting. Why don't you play for more? But I guess he does that like intense training. Then he goes to the gym or then he'll do off court stuff. But, uh, and yeah. it's good. It's yeah. research has shown that's the best thing you can do. Now, sometimes it's good in the afternoon to maybe do an hour, but if he and Riley's in, he he had we all know he has that focus. Yeah, you can just watch yes. him and see it. Hundred percent. He yes. he couldn't probably over that two hours do any more. Maybe an hour in the out later afternoon, but when you're doing that, especially at that level, and you have those skill sets and those neural pathways and the abilities and capabilities and skills, then it's just a matter of fine tuning them and keeping those neural pathways because every day those neural pathways are expanding or getting smaller. They don't stay the same. Yeah. So you've got to keep them, keep them going. I guess this would be the one question I would have like someone at that caliber, you know, you're playing a lot. You're going to be playing a lot of matches. Um, when they do gold medal matches, when they have long days, they're playing way more oh, yeah. than if they were to practice just that. So how do you, I guess, you know, you're going to have to focus more than two hours if you are playing a tournament or something like that. So I don't know. What are your just, what are your thoughts there? Oh, uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know if I have a good answer for that, but okay. I think that they are fine tuned to be able to do that. So think of when you go to a tournament, yeah. the, those of us who are, are yeah. just mere mortals yeah. and, and we have an hour and a half break in between games and yeah. it's just like you fall apart. You know, you lose focus. You're sitting around talking. And then like, yeah. hey, you have seven minutes of practice. And oh, great. I <sighs> warm up. No, nah, it's just terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for them, they're in great shape. They know the shots. They've practiced them every day, you know, hour and a half, two hours a day. That they're just able to brain-wise, they know how to do it. Because it's, the, it's their job. It's what they do. Yeah. I mean, they're doing it how many times a month? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, so you said, um, let's see. Sleep? Yep, sleep. You said, uh, what did we just talk Practice, about? 90 minutes. So you can practice. practice something intensely for 90 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes every day. That's more logical for people who have to work and, okay. and do things like that. And then what would be your, I don't know, one last one or last two? Okay, I was going to say keeping the body healthy. And I'm going to say body healthy and mind healthy, meaning you're stretching, especially if you're 55 plus. Do not go out and play and don't stretch before and don't stretch after. That's when we see accidents occur. And okay. I'll be honest with you, been active my whole life, have never been a stretcher yeah. until pickleball. Now I'm realizing, especially as I start to age, okay, yeah. I've got to stay so active to do that. So, so dynamic stretches in the beginning, static in the, in the, in the yeah. end. Yep. Yeah. And then I'd say the last thing is you have to do something for your brain every day. Now, there's a lot of research on journal writing, gratitude. Now, I'm a big gratitude person, but a lot of people just say, I'm going to think of five things I'm grateful for. But the problem is, is after a week, you think of the same five things over and over again. So there's what we call Nikon type of gratitude where you're asking questions like, what did someone do for me today or yesterday that made a difference in my life? What am I grateful for? Because mm -hmm. it changes every day. Like, so tonight or tomorrow, I'll be like, oh, being on with Jordan was good fun. We got information yeah. out there. We enjoyed it. You know, we have yeah. great friends. So that would be, and then I'd be, what have I done for somebody else? to make a difference in their life and have them be grateful for me. So it, it's constantly yeah. changing and what gratitude mm. does. Um, so gratitude. Oh, it changes the brain because what it does is it sets the neural network and focus towards things like what is good in my life. Cause remember your 70% thoughts that are the same every day, most likely are negative threat state type of thinking. Whereas gratitude is all the positive things. So yeah. we're shifting the mind to look towards what is great about my life versus what is wrong with my life. Got it. Um, this is one podcast I listen to. He's actually an entrepreneur. Uh, one of the things he does, and I've been wanting to do this in a while, but it's really going to get me thinking to really move forward to this. One of the things he does is he does, he has certain habits in the morning, mm -hmm. but he does a, a, a three gratitude Texas mm -hmm. and he texts three people. It's three people every time differently. Um, just, just one, you know, it could be a family member, friend. Um, he, he texts them what they're, what he's thankful for. It could be short. It could be long. And then as he goes throughout his day, right, he, he's mm -hmm. getting responses right, back. Right. So he does that every day. And I just think that that's, 
that's just a really cool thing. And it, it just reminded me of, of that because uh, he sends it out, then he gets it back. But not not solely for him, but right. just because it's a really good exercise. And he also the connection and, and oh, yeah. different things. And think about when you get a text that says something like, I appreciate you yeah. or I like you because of this. Yeah. Oh, the brain lights up. Yeah. And we're so grateful and the friendship increases. And he's not only changing their life for the day, he's yeah. changed their day. Yes. Then most likely they're going to respond back with something like, yeah. you know, I, I had a text yesterday that someone said, how do I be like Chris Bray? I'm trying to think today of how to be more like you. And I was like, I was thinking the same thing. I want to be more like you. But the thought that uh-huh. someone even thought about me and thought there was something positive enough that yeah. oh, I want to take that attribute and be more like that. Oh, it changed my day. I had the best day. Yeah. No, that's super cool, man. No, it was. Yeah. Um, we got to do another pine, pine top trip here. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about that. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to the right people who we yeah. know listen to the podcast to yeah. make sure that, that gets. Shout out to, to Matt. Yes, exactly. Matt. And he's been on the podcast. He did a great job. And Well, not on this one. Oh, was it? No, no. He was on the, uh, on the air. He was on That's the orchard. Right. That's but right. you know what? After that though, after you talking to me about that, yeah, I, I think I'd have Matt on. Oh, he's hilarious. He's I'd funny. He's so knowledgeable about yeah. pickleball Yeah, yeah. and it just, he's a, he's a great guy. So he, he's a, we call him the pickleball mayor yeah. in, in Gilbert, Arizona. Actually well, pretty much. Well, he's Arizona. a, he's a, um, a manager now. Yeah. Team of, manager. Of MLP. So. That's right. For yeah. Arizona. So the Arizona one. Yeah. But anytime I'll come back and let's see what the response is. Maybe people yeah. be like, the response yeah. will be like, that was the most boring no, thing. Know. You we'll know, see. hopefully they Comment like it. Comment below if you're enjoying this. And then again, we're going to, we're going to, I'm just going to say, we're going to have Chris, uh, Dr. Chris on again sometime. Could I'll be tomorrow. Back. It could be <laughs> ne- next year. I don't know. But comment some questions yeah. below that I, you want me to ask him specifically about either your situation about pickleball comment below because i'll just i'll just gather them up and i'll ask him next time um let's see anything uh la- last thoughts chris that you can tell i don't know some of the viewers out there that are um i don't know just as a whole i don't know i think we covered a lot of different things but oh, we co- we covered the gap and gave people yeah. enough tools that they yeah. have something to do but as we close out the yeah. thing that I try to have people remember the most is that you can change your life through how you think and how your brain works, yeah. your perception and what you're thinking about. And so as you change those negative thoughts to positive ones yeah. and then take action behind it, creating the right habits, it is life-changing. And pickleball is the perfect example because love people it, who are never healthy, yeah. there was, uh, I'll give you a good story. There was an, an individual who start, I started playing with okay. and within like six months of playing pickleball. He wasn't really active before, maybe yeah. played a little basketball. Yeah. He lost like 45 pounds no, and he became much happier, more friendly. It was, oh, yeah. watching well, this change was amazing. Yeah. I'm sure you see this all the time. Yeah, I mean, we read a, we read an article last, last episode about someone losing over 100 pounds. It's, I mean, it's amazing. You know, it's just unbelievable. And then uh, actually in that article, she, I believe it was a, a female, she went back to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh my gosh, if I could just bottle this, right. what did you do? I don't even think she changed her diet really. I think she just played pickleball because she was just having fun. Right. And then like she looked like six, nine months down the road and it's like, oh, I lost 100 pounds, you know? It's amazing. But then you can also yeah. lose the weight that you're carrying off your shoulders of, yeah. you know, the thoughts that you're thinking. It yeah. goes both ways, not just your physical, but also your mental of, I, a lot of stories of people, I'm not as stressed, I'm happier, yeah. you know, I don't have as much depression. Yeah. And exercise is one of the best medications. I'm not saying go off your medication, of course, but yeah. it's one of the best ways mm. to alleviate stress and depression. Yeah, exercise. really, really cool, Chris. Um, actually, three more things um, before we go. Okay, we just um, keep going. Yeah, yeah. We're three more things. <laughs> speed up, playback speed yeah. now goes to 1.5. That's right. Don't, uh, don't uh, yeah, go to 1.5 or, or don't yeah. click off now. This is, the, this is the good stuff now. Yeah. Um, this is really interesting, Chris. I want to get your take on this. Okay. You may have a huge take or you may have no take. Okay. But this, when we talk about several things that happen in our time that totally change everything, this is one. Um, your thoughts on chat GPT. Oh, and, and, okay. it's, and it's positive or negative effects on society. So what's really interesting here, um, if you guys, listeners, this has doesn't really have anything to do with pickleball, but it could really affect you. Um, so chat GPT is a, uh, a AI that's publicly available, um, to everyone. If you're living under a rock, that's what it is. Um, what's, and Chris, some of the, actually, you know what I did? I, I said, Hey, chat GPT, I'm doing a pickleball podcast today. 
interviewing a, a brain neuroscience yeah. doctor. What are some questions? Tw five seconds. Five seconds. Look, it, it spit out. Great questions. All these great questions. Great questions. I mean, if I were to pay somebody to come up with these questions, it would have took an hour. You know? What do you think, man? I mean, in your opinion, like society, there's a lot of things. Like a lot of people like it. A lot of people, and man, this is like, this is going to change a lot oh, of things. It's, it's going to. What do you think? Positive, negative? What do you think, man? Well, let, let's, I'll take two different perspectives. So from okay. uh, a PhD academic yeah. learning perspective. Yeah. I, I don't like it. And here's why I don't like well, it. Well, there's going to be no, no one's I writing mean, papers. No one's writing papers. No one's critically thinking. No, no one's working. Cause think of what it affects. It affects your ability to write. Cause you're not yeah. writing that often. It affects your ability to learn which you're learning and you're reading it, but you're not having to search it out. Um, it affects your ability to be creative yeah. cause you're, you're just putting it in. Yeah. Um, and all those great things that come from actually writing a paper, critically thinking about it. Is this what I want to say? Is this not what I want to say? Cause when you put it in chat, chat GPT, yeah. it spits it out and it's so good that you can just change a couple little things here I and know, there I know. and you've got, so the learning aspect of creating a, a smart brain that cognitively works at high performance, it's going to have an effect. Yeah. It, cause what it turns you into, it turns you into the scroll zombie of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, where you'll lose hours, yeah. you know, just with a lot of good stuff that isn't for your brain. And I'm not against social media yeah. in short doses, yeah. but in long doses, it's not good for the brain at all. Yeah. So in that way, I don't like it. Okay. But in a lot of ways, I love that I have more access to information, even more better than Google than I didn't have before in the detail that is maybe not as, um, yeah. What, what's the word? It's not as scripted for me yeah. as, as, Hey, this is just what came up. So the information access is incredible, but they're going to be, I mean, yeah. there are going to be a lot of things that have to be weighed. I mean, I know a lot of universities are now saying, so, you it's know, crazy. I, like I said, I teach at Harvard, the brain health initiative in Harvard right now. What do we do? A lot of the universities are saying, what do we do with, well, they're not going to be this? able to tell what a real no. paper is and not so. Cause the better it gets. Yeah. the more it's going to be able to add in stories. Cause if you put in stories, it's going to learn what kind of stories you like. And oh, dude, it's crazy. Have you messed around with it? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. I just wanted your thoughts on that. Sure. Um, uh, secondly, we got a little, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So oh, look at this. The here, picture's terrible. Here, look here, at this. Here we go. We got a, uh, here we'll get, we'll get in this camera. Here. So do you want the story? Do you want, uh, I yeah, mean, we'll get the story, but this is Wheaties. Um, you'll see all time greats who was on this, like in the back oh. Tiger Woods, we got, uh, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan. Oh, um, all the greats of all the greats. And Caitlyn then, Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. Okay. And then now Dr. Chris Bray <laughs> <laughs> so, with, hold on. Is that a, is that a car shout out to carbon? Okay. Now listen to this. I know. So oh, wait, oh power for series, a uh, power series. So <laughs> here is what is hilarious about that is I'm just going to set it. I know just so we can see, just stare, <laughs> stare at that now. Okay, so oh so just in thirty seconds or less, I did some work, or I do work with General Mills, the organization who makes they, Wheaties. They own Wheaties, yeah. Yeah, they own Wheaties, and so some of the work we did, it went over so well that they said we're going to put your uh -huh. face on a Wheaties box. And so, of course, what did I say? Being a big pickleball fan, I said, "Have you ever had uh -huh. any individual pickleball person yeah. on the Wheaties?" Because I know. Yeah. You, you probably, you wish you could be on a Wheaties box. Like I mean, me. I yeah. wish I could play like you, yeah, but you're not on a Wheaties box. No, that would be, I would, I would. It's, it's like a Grammy. It's yeah. like a pickleball Grammy. Yes. So yes. what happened is they sent it to me. And I think you can, you know, like, like you, you tried to toast me by saying, but it's not for sale anywhere, which I actually think it is for sale in the, yeah. <laughs> the headquarters yes. in Minnesota. Yeah, at General no, Mills. Cool. You can probably five of them, which my wife probably already bought. And, yeah. and we don't invite people over for dinner anymore. We just say, come over for breakfast and just yeah. lo and behold, <laughs> It's There's just Dr. The, Bray. It's just in the box. But here's the thing that, that General Mills said is General Mills said they have, I am the first person to a pickleball person to ever be on a Wheaties box. So pros, Ben Johns. So eat that, want, Ben Johns. If you want my signature. <laughs> no, I, seriously. So some 4045 guy actually ended up on a Wheaties box. Wait. An, oh, it's just me and my, my rating. Like, can you believe it? I I, I'm not even someone. close to a five Oh or yeah, pro yeah, yeah. and I'm on a Wheaties box. So no, man. you never know what's going to happen in life. Right? Dude, Let's go. Look at this. Four grams of sugar. We got to take that out. Dude, right we got to take that. So um, should, should I call carbon and say, Hey, you better send me a, send me a free paddle for all the advertisement. Free. I mean, this is, <laughs> if you make the Wheaties box, hold on. I, I know the owners, Garrett, 
at Carbon, okay? Okay. If, if this is on the Wheaties box, this is lifetime supply of paddles. Let me let me help you I, out. See, I, I agree with that That's because- lifetime, dude. I, I probably sold how many of those for people Carbon paddles from the regular yeah. series to the power series yeah, of, Fred, yeah. you know how we all, we all yeah, yeah. you know, we all do it. So, That's but if they want to, if they want to copy Carbon does, I'm happy to, to send them a, okay. just to let them know it's the number one. Now, I do wish I was a little younger looking than, yeah. than that. It, it, it would be more believable. The old guy who's on the Wheaties box doesn't quite work as well, but- That's cool. I'll take it well this is the demographic right this is what they're, this <laughs> hey, it's is what getting they're younger and younger look at the pros yeah younger and younger no no really cool um so you work you, you did some work for for general mills i do work with them they're they're a client that we we do work with and yeah. we did some stuff for them around resilience okay and and are you working with employees or the or the um the man like the um, the management all of the above so for example okay, so like for we'll, we'll work for everybody like we did something recently through COVID for hsbc went to about 150,000 employees. So every, everybody. Okay. Everybody. All right. Now, lastly, this is a new a little segment here. Oh, look at this. Oh no. What is this? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's I a, love uh, it. I don't know. This is, I'm, I don't know. We're going to leave a comment below, but this is going to the, be the Briones uh, pickleball uh, wheel of, uh, I don't know, top spin, uh, spin wheel. I here. like it. I don't know. I, I wrote these down. We'll just see how it goes. I have several things here. Why don't you give it a whirl here? A big whirl here. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, it's like a wheel of fortune. I I love it. Oh, funny story. Oh, you, are, you just got one. You just got one with the Wheaties okay. box. That's right. that's a good one. Okay, you want to spin again then? Okay. Okay, that was. A, yeah. Should I tell you my favorite player? No, we shouldn't say that. No, no. Here we go. All right. Okay. Impersonation. Oh, you're um, gonna make me impersonate somebody? Yeah, we're gonna go. Do you? How much pro pickleball do you watch? Oh, I watch a lot of pro pickleball. Oh, okay, I, I've got an impersonation. Okay, let, let's for see. You. Let's see your uh, Dr. Chris Bray. Let's see. Let's see your uh, and, and there's, best person. There, uh, do, you have a, do you have a paddle? Do you, you, you don't have a paddle. Yeah, I got one. On I got one. Okay, grab a paddle. And why you're grabbing a paddle? Because there are two people who see if you can see if. Oh, and it's actually perfect. This is a perfect paddle for this. <laughs> so everything I'm everything I'm gonna hit will be two will be two-handed from everything. Everything. Everything I hit almost is two-handed, both male and female, both of them. Not on Always the forehand hit side. Well, a lot of them are forehand. What are you, are you what sure? Pro? Yes, what pro? With, with Selkirk? The Newmans. They, that's they a terrible don't... impression. Yeah, that's that was, terrible. that was, you know what? That was a 3-0 impression. That was a 3-0 Really, impression. really good. It was, it Chris, was just, really, no, really good. Okay. I can't do impressions. But you know what? This was- Oh, uh, that should have done a boo. Yeah. That's what you <laughs> They're not, they're not. No, the not anymore. No, but they were, you're right. They, you're they right. Were. They were there. Um, and they don't have a two handed forehand. Just to let you know. Sometimes they do. Well, when they're blocking, sometimes these that's, that's backhands. Old. All right. We're going to have to, educate. we'll watch. I'll send you video. How's okay. That? <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll diagram it like you do. Okay. Like you do with. Okay. All right. Well, um, Chris, I think that was uh, really informative there. And, uh, yeah, I think the viewers are really going to like this. We'll um, cut out that last part with the notes. We'll just let that be. It was <laughs> no, long enough. Yeah. Yeah. No well, editor, leave it in there. It was, it was just really, really great TV there. Um, uh, anything, uh, do you want to shout out anything? I don't know your podcast, your, what you do. Oh, sure. So just employees of the month. I, don't know. I, I love it. Well, shout out to all the pickleball buddies everywhere. So first go. of all that, yeah. um, and you can go to the podcast is the Dr. CK Bray show. It's 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. I don't interview anyone. It's not as fun as this. It's just me yeah. giving information about life yeah. and work and performance and the brain and health and longevity and okay, all sorts cool. of good stuff. And yeah. you can buy, I've written two books. So one is about called best job ever. It's about six years old, but it's a good book. If you want to work on your career okay. or figure out what to do with your career. And the is that second more, was that more mindset based or what? It, oh, what is that? it's like step-by-step -step tools to creating the career that you want is, is okay. what it is. So it's, it's a good one. And the second one, and the was, second, Oh, uh, this is a good, this one. On. I, I got, recommend. It. You I got, got it. it. It's the how to raise yeah. remarkable kids without talking to them. It It is. So, so why don't you give me a little, uh, just a little in under 15 seconds. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, just, once my kids hit high school, cause they stopped listening to you is I would write notes to them and put them on their mirror mm. every day. And so after doing four children, I created a book. And so depending on what they were going through in their life, I wrote different things. Wow. Could be motivational, That's could cool. be advice, could be funny stories. We had fun Friday. Like I interjected all these things where they could earn money or, or, or and, special prizes. And by that's how you stuff. got them to talk to you. 
and that's how I got them to talk to. And they all turned out they're all good kids. Yeah, so okay. I got lucky. So it's it's well worth. It's just small. It's a little book you can read in an afternoon and okay. and help you with your teenager for those who have teenagers. So it's not just that. Are you actually giving tips on? On, with, with dealing you with teenagers get the and tips stuff? through the post-it notes of exactly what I said. And then you can make it, make it your own. But the great thing about it is it really it's a January 1st through December 31st. So you could read one post-it note a day. You could use it yourself oh. and, and do it. And so, okay. and I share what they're in the book. I share what they were going through. So interesting. Everything from, you know, school events to being honest wow. to, you know, are they getting a little royalty kind of for, for their stories? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause I paid all that money all right. for tennis and pickleball yeah, lessons, right? There you That's go. right. So, okay. And then what's the, it says here you had a third book due February 23. Yeah. But you didn't, is it delayed? Well, it wasn't delayed. I decided to change the publisher oh, on it okay. for a couple of reasons. But okay. another reason was is because we have a brain book coming out, like a brain health at work book that's going to be coming out later this year. Okay. And we want the focus to be on that for this year. Yeah. And okay. then the other one is about just being a leader and being a leader in an organization from a brain perspective, like how to influence people, get people to change, how to coach people. Yeah. Because how we mostly do it in corporate and even in life, you know, from coach. People are yeah. terrible coaches. Terrible coaches. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's one. What's a so I, I'm a coach and I I understand what you're saying because I run a lot. I run across a lot. But what what are some good qualities to you of a good coach? It, it could be across any. It doesn't really matter what they're coaching, right? You're ready so, for this. Yeah. They're truthful. They can hurt people's feelings because mm. people come to you because they want to be better. And what do we oftentimes want to do as a coach or or we're trying to influence someone is we make them feel good, which that's a part of it. People need to hear the truth. Yeah. To have a friend who will tell you the truth, Katrina has no problem telling you the, t- yeah. telling you the truth. Yeah. But to have someone in your life who can tell you the honest truth, is it is one of the best gifts that you can ever have. So as a coach, to say, I care about you enough that I'm going to yeah. tell you this part of your game and you t- your delivery is important. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like really, like it would be a 2-0. Like it's terrible. <laughs> oh, me too. I don't want to say stuff like that, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Tell them the truth and then give them the tools to be able to improve it. And you're going to change their life because it comes back to potential. You're helping them unlock their potential. And when you're a coach who unlocks people potential, it's, as you've seen, yeah. you change lives through little small things. It's, a, yes. it's amazing. Okay, cool. Well, we'll be, uh, didn't think that I was going to give you that answer. Did you? Yeah. You thought I was going to give you the pat answer. No, um, no, I wasn't sure what to expect there. Oh. But uh, what what would you be? What would be second in line? So truthful, but obviously, come on, there's got to be other good qualities of of a coach. I would say the nice part of it is, of course, you always want to listen. Is to change, help them change their perspective of themselves. Because when they work with you, let me All give right. you an example. So when they work with you and they're terrible, yeah. let's say resetters or something, and you help them, you know, have the experience of being able to reset, it changes their view of themselves. Like, oh wow, I can do this. He taught me how I can do it. I can yeah. do it on my own. Yeah. And so we have to give them the tools to be able to really be able to do it. And when you do it, and, and here's the thing, it, the interesting thing is what research says is it parlays to other parts of their life. So if I'm successful here, like when we look at really successful people, a lot of them are successful in every aspect of their life because they have the right habits mm. and behaviors and thinking that, that span across all those areas. Yeah. Um, when they don't, which I'm not saying like Tiger Woods is a good example when they don't and they're too focused yeah. that can cause huge issues whatever yeah. those issues may be yeah. but it's teaching people the skills to be able to do it and changing their their perception of themselves because then they go home and they if I can do this yeah. then I can do this okay cool well Dr. Chris Bray so fun appreciate it man uh thank you so much and uh yeah like comment subscribe uh go check out uh, the, what is your podcast called again? Dr. CK Bray show, Dr. CK Bray, anywhere show. you find podcasts. There you go. Go check that out too. And we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>